Sit quietly and look upon the world you see and tell yourself the real world is not like this. It has no buildings and there are no streets where people walk alone and separate. There are no stores where people buy an endless list of things they do not need. It is not lit with artificial light and night comes not upon it. There is no day that brightens and grows dim. There is no loss. The world you see must be denied, for sight of it is costing you a different kind of vision. You cannot see both worlds, for each of them involves a different kind of seeing and depends on what you cherish. The sight of one is possible because you have denied the other. Both are not true, yet either one will seem as real to you as the amount to which you hold it dear. You do not really want the world you see, for it has disappointed you since time began. The homes you have built have never sheltered you. The roads you made have led you nowhere, and no city that you built has withstood the crumbling assault of time. Nothing you made but has the mark of death upon it. Hold it not, dear, for it is old and tired and ready to return to dust even as you made it. This aching world has not the power to touch the living world at all. And so although you turn in sadness from it, you cannot find in it the road that leads away from it. Yet the real world has the power to touch you even here because you love it and what you call with love will come to you. Love always answers, being unable to deny a call for help. All that you need to give this world away in glad exchange for what you did not make is willingness to learn the one you made is false. All seeing starts with the perceiver who judges what is true and what is false. And what he judges false he does not see. You who would judge reality cannot see it, for whenever judgment enters reality has slipped away. The out of mind is out of sight, because what is denied is there, but it is not recognized. Christ is still there, although you do not know him. His being does not depend upon your recognition. He lives within you in the quiet present and waits for you to leave the past behind and enter into the world he holds out to you in love. No one in this distracted world but has seen some glimpses of the other world about him. Love leads so gladly. As you follow him, you will rejoice that you have found his company and learned of him the joyful journey home. To give this sad world over and exchange your errors for the peace of God is but your will, and Christ will always offer you the will of God in recognition that you share it with him. The peace of God passeth your understanding only in the past. Yet here it is, and you can understand it now. God loves his son forever, and his son returns his father's love forever. The real world is the way that leads you to remembrance of the one thing that is wholly true and wholly yours. For all else you have lent yourself in time, and it will fade. But this one thing is always yours being the gift of God unto his Son. Your one reality was given you, and by it God created you as one with him. <laughs>